Hello and welcome to B Tech Philosophers with me, comedian Elliot Steele, and my good friend, my best pal, Michael Odawale. Who is also a comedian. Who's also a comedian. Yeah, I left that part out. And introducing our, our by the way, because mm -hmm. uh, this is week five. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you would have heard on several episodes, producer Phoebe, who we, we never actually introduced. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't introduce her, and we feel really bad and guilty for it, especially since last week we had Vittorio. Uh, a very good comedian who we introduced, I think, five seconds into the to the podcast. Yeah, well, before, he, before you introduce yourselves, I'm pretty sure I think, you were like, yeah. this is Vittorio, and by the way, this is our podcast. Well, yeah. he's a man. Yeah. Right, there is that. We yeah. do need to take that into account. I'm oh. a lesser citizen. Yeah, and um, yeah. thank you for admitting it as well, because so many times w women get angry when you bring that up. Mm. <laughs> and it's it's about time, I think, for the first time in history... In history. In history that we finally say, hey, ladies, men, whatever you're doing, enough of that. Yeah. Yeah. But we're enough trying to <laughs> we're trying to change that the week after International Women's Week and, and, and Phoebe is, is a valued member. Not a week, a day. They get a day. They get a day well, after they... International Women's Week. There, they... there, there's no international. Look, black people get a month. We get a month. They could, you, black people could get two if they did the uh, October in Britain and then go over to America and they, they, that's two months. Something to blame us for again. I'm not uh, blaming anyone. I'm saying two months is a lot. Where's White History Month, Mike? I think it's every other day. Every other day. Outside of <laughs> October. Um, <laughs> we do we, every other day. We get. <laughs> even Black History Month. You guys kind of involved in that. Oh, that was that's because we have to learn about how evil we are. Yeah. I thought you meant we're involved because, like, we are the reason that we have Black History Month. Yeah, that's that's how I. That's <laughs> how I that is how I intend. Yeah, we we did give you a, a whole month. The reason, yeah, we, the reason month. we have a month is because of uh, you know the stuff you guys did. A long month as well. October, we could have been sneaky and given you February. Where they have done that in America. <laughs> they literally have done that. They have in the they? US. Yeah. It's, it was a rough. It's uh, past Black History Month. They've been a bit rough, man. We, we've not really. We've had to share the spotlight with other traumas, you oh. know, like uh, Ukraine and COVID. We've, never, we've, never, we've not had a clean month in a while. Not, not that I'm saying, you know, you know, Ukraine is bad and COVID is bad. But it'd be good if we just had a month on us. Anyway, thank you for introducing me onto the podcast. And yes, women should pipe down everywhere. Right, See, this is why we have yeah. Phoebe to, to get us out of those awkward moments. <laughs> I don't even know how we got here. We were just trying to give you praise and then we ended up in this. You literally cut yourself off from introducing me to talk about. Yeah, uh, I apologize. <laughs> but that's 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 ADHD. That's not I'm not rude. That's, I'm, not, that's not misogyny. That's not misogyny. That's, uh, it was a bit. Uh, it was good fun. But within pretending to be misogynist, misogynist, I have actually just been incredibly misogynist. <laughs> it's the misogyny with a little, 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 little bit of banner, little bit of banner. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not, it's not real. Isn't it? But um, how's your good, how's your week been, Elliot? Good for like, philosophical week. Very philosophical week. I feel like we've not been done introducing producer Phoebe. No, I, I think we should leave this alone before we get into any other. I don't know any other historic wrongs we could like end up getting into by introducing Phoebe more. I know, we, we go to introduce Phoebe again and then we accidentally like deny the Holocaust or something. You know what I mean? we end up here? What? This is, this is what, this why we don't introduce you, Phoebe. Oh, it's no. just for the good of our careers. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give the people a wave and, and we'll leave it at that. Okay. That's perfect, there we go. You said you, had a, go. you said you had a very philosophical week. Tell me, tell me a bit more. Yeah, I, um, I, as you know, you said save it for the pod. I did a, a gigs on the weekend on Saturday. Mm. Elliot is a professional comedian who is available for bookings. Available for bookings. Um, and I was at this one show, one show I was very much looking forward to do, which was Stephen Grant's new gig, The Forge in Brighton. I urge anyone in Brighton to go and check it out. It's mm -hmm. a very, very cool venue with some of the best lineups in the country. So I was doing that gig. And then I got a message off a promoter going, basically, there's this thing in comedy called doubling, where if you're in one city... It, it, you have to. You can do it. You could do it easily in London. Uh, it, you won't really step. You can on, do two gigs in one night. Yeah, basically. but you won't step on a promoter's toes mm -hmm. in London, mm -hmm. really. Whereas some places, they might not like that they've booked you for a fee, mm -hmm. and then another promoter sees you're there, offers you a lesser fee, but because you're there, you'll do the gig. Mm -hmm. They might be like, actually, no, I've paid this fee for you. I don't want you 
to do that gig. So basically, think of promoters as like pimps and they've paid for your service. Yes. And they don't want you working for another pimp. Yes. You know what I mean? I, I own you for this particular amount of time. And if you go work for another pimp, I might have to get the, uh, you know, the, the hanger out. That's an incredibly terrifying analogy that that was your go to. Right. But yeah. Uh, I said get the hanger to hang up your clothes because you're done from my pimping uh, experience. I felt like that was an iceberg slim <laughs> reference. You, you didn't expect me to know who that was either. Uh, he surprised me. But uh, <laughs> continue, continue. Story. So I got a message from this other promoter going, hey, I've checked with this venue. Come do my shows. Long story short, I went and did one show, went to the other venue to do Stephen's show. Stephen was actually fine with it, but it turned out that's not how the promoter, the promoter had worded it wrongly to Stephen and had put Stephen in, my opinion, an awkward position where he had to be fine with what was going on. Okay. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, it, 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 it was, it was undercutting. Now that annoyed me. What also annoyed me is this other promoter was charging 20 pound a ticket mm -hmm. and bro, not paying anywhere near someone who was paying, charging 20 quid a ticket. Didn't He made out he was charging like a five or a ticket. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Those th so the, it wasn't the money issue itself that really annoyed me. That was on top of it, but it was it was more the way he'd it was undercut the, a friend of mine. Out. It was the deceit. It was the deceit. So I messaged you about it, mm -hmm. going. Like, so I had to go back and do this other. So I was meant to be doing two shows for that guy, mm -hmm. one for Stephen. So I then messaged him, going, "Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not going to go do the other show out of." It. I just felt ill on my way to the venue. Mm -hmm. I just felt this wasn't right, and, and I was thinking of ways I could fuck with the gig, and I was like. That's not my job. Yeah. As a comedian, isn't yeah. to fuck up a gig. There's like an audience that have paid. There is an audience who have paid money to go to this. They don't know about all this politics that's gone behind the scenes. Yeah. They so, just come out for a good comedy night. So I, ju I just decided to, uh, in my own way, put down that part, the angry part of me at him that wanted revenge, mm -hmm. uh, the hateful part of me, uh, and get the train home. Mm. And I went home and I watched Match of the Day. Wow. So instead of spiting a gig, to uh to 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 sabotage this promoter's night, which you potentially had every right to do, considering the way that he uh he lied to you. Do you do you, how what, what do you make of that from the promoter? Just just so people get like a different comics perspective on this, because it's it's a dick move in my opinion. I I think it was a greed a, a deceitful move, especially if he, you, you're saying he told the other promoter uh false information to acquire to get your services. Uh, do you not feel like you you could have uh, spoken with this promoter uh, to try and find out like what's what's going on? Why how, why why did you lie on my name? I the still name. I do think I could have done that. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, I'm not going to get very far with him, and within me not getting very far on him, I know myself. Mm -hmm. I will come out looking worse than him, mm -hmm. um, just because of. Or how I can be as a person. Mm -hmm. I was, I can be very. I'm not saying this to look like big-headed or or like necessarily tough or anything like that, but I kind of have a. Oh, you're willing to go to level three? Well, I'll go to level eight. Right. Do you know? You didn't I'm, even double it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, you added two more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, let's. Uh, like I, I kind of have that, which is something I'm working on as myself. It's something that like I have to work through because it's quite, it's quite bad of me. It comes from a place of anger, I guess. You chose to be the bigger man. You didn't give in to the hate. Yeah, I sent you? him a nice message going, I, I don't think it's appropriate for me to come do the gig, but best of luck with everything. Mm. And then when he asked why, what have I done? I just went, I don't like the way you do business. It is what it is. And I, I didn't even try to engage in an argument. Do you know what this reminds me of? Uh, the, the Whitney Houston anthem. It's okay. not right, but it's okay. <laughs> right. I'm going to move on anyway. That's not the lyrics, but it's just it's so just it didn't that. remind you of the anthem at all. It no, reminded but it, you the, the, your idea of what the song was. It it's just not it. right, but it's okay. I'm going to make it anyway. And I'm going to stop there before we get charged by the Whitney <laughs> Houston estate. Thank you. Because we cannot afford to pay those royalties. But it's the same premise. You were you were cheated on. Okay. And you're like, you think I'm going to stick around? Mm-mm, baby. I'm I'm leaving. Should I said to the like left? That? To the left. Should I go down there? So next time, I think I'm gonna go down and get angry. I should actually get like sassy black woman and be like, uh, uh sugar. I I, I felt that. very uncomfortable. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, but that's but that, that, that outburst right but there. That, that, but that's what um, I, it's better that I try it here to make everyone else 
uncomfortable. Just me, make me uncomfortable. Well, I'd rather run it by you. I, and I'm telling you, it's not okay. Yeah, you run it by me. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Um, I should go down there and sing Whitney Houston to him. Oh, uh, Whitney I'm, Houston, Beyonce. You were the bigger woman. You said pack your bags. I'm out. packing my bags. I'm leaving. I'm getting. Uh, I think you made the made the right choice. I think I think if a woman packs her bags and leaves, that's more cold than mm. her making you pack your bags and leaving away. When a woman is fed up, eh? Just that, pack your bags in the middle of the night. And, that is cold. And get out. Phoebe, you ever done that? Just pack your bags, middle of the night? No, no. But I did uh, once, like I woke up and I just got the ick when mm. I turned to look. But it was nothing. It had just been like little things that had built up and I just turned and like we were lying next to each other and I just woke up and t- rolled over and looked at him with like just disgust and oh. I stopped myself like vomiting in my mouth. What was the ick over? Just his general... Everything about him. Ooh. That's what scares me about. And then I had to be like, man. I had to be like, right, I'm, I'm ending because it was the end. Of, it was whilst we were at uni, and it was like the end of summer. And I was like, right, it's the end of term, so I'm going home. But also, like, it's the end of us kind of thing. And he was like, no, it's not. And I was like, yeah, it is. And walked. That is cold blooded. <laughs> See, this is why I'm scared of love. Like, what if a woman gets the ick when she's walking down the aisle? Oh, it's like I don't like Ooh. the way because you have a bow tie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His head looks so big in that bow tie. Imagine that, like she's walking down and she's like, the way he eats wedding cake <laughs> is unmanly. Or like, what if you're you're crying and she's walking down, it's like, oh, this pussy over. Right? Like, what the fuck? I'm, I'm getting out of here. Yeah, this I don't know. If I, got, if I got an ick on my wedding day, I think I might, I don't know if I'd go through with it. How, what's, the, what's the dumbest ick you've ever had? <laughs> this was recently, I've said it on another podcast. Uh, a guy had well man. He was taking well, man. Oh, go fuck yourself, Phoebe. <laughs> you is that oh. like just <laughs> oh he looks after himself? Nutrition. Yeah, but what? Nutrition but what, gave no, you the what ick? are they? But what are... It's not nutritious, is it? It's just random bits and bobs. And also linking to this, right? They It was loose in their... Like loose pills. In, in the their pot. bag. Well, man. You're not... Clearly not taking care of yourself that much. Taking vitamins taking now vitamins. gives women the icks. This is yeah, but they're not. They it's nothing, less. is it? And I was like, why have you got well, man? He was like, oh, yeah, because of like, the fit guy on the cover. No, you're not oh, going to okay. look like him. Okay, yeah. He needs to start running that test if he wants to look like him. He's not going to... Well, man pills aren't going to get you there. Okay, so if he took steroids instead, that would reverse the ick. That's more manly. No, that's more of an ick for me. Really? Yeah. They do shrink in your penis. I no, heard. they don't. They don't shrink in your penis? Uh, it depends what you take. Um, it's like on a broad spectrum. That's kind of a term that I, I think that's used as a thing about it. I know I've never done steroids. This is the most serious you've ever talked about anything in two and a half episodes. You yeah. just went straight in with knowledge on uh, this. If you were to go through, uh, I don't know, if not that I advocate them, but if you uh, want to look like the person or even near like that person, it's partly down to genetics. If you want to look like the person on that advert, the supplements they're selling aren't going to do it. Mm. You need to run, work a regime that works for you, eat well, and also run that test or trend if you really, really want to go for The views shared by Elliot Stiller are shared by Elliot Stiller alone. I, I just, uh, the B-Tech yeah. Philosophy podcast does not advocate the taking of steroids. Uh, I, I, will, I will say this, though. I think it's criminal of advertising agencies and Hollywood to not say that that's what people are doing. What are you, what are you talking about? You, talk, you telling me those Marvel people, they don't they don't look like that? They didn't do that just through their own hard work? They did with steroids. Like, you, you, they still work hard. They still eat right. You don't just take... You can take steroids and just come big, but to look like that, they do everything else correctly. It's not a... a um, I'm not mocking their work, mm-hmm. but I'm saying stop with the dishonesty of this is what people look like without... Without the without the supplements that they are taking. Okay, so if I'm a, if I'm a Hollywood superstar, right, mm-hmm. and I'm on the cover of Men's Health magazine with the six pack and yeah. all of that, do I have a social responsibility to tell the readers I took steroids? I I I think so. I think it's mis marketing. I think when uh, so for example, you, do you remember that word? This is what a beach body looks like campaign, mm-hmm. or are you beach body ready? Which is hilarious that everyone got mad at, in my opinion, because it's a fitness advert. So it's meant to be advocating, you know, fitness. All bodies are allowed on the beach, though. They are. Nobody said they're not. Unless you're in France and you're wearing a veil because they're very um, Islamophobic. (laughs) That is bad that they banned that. Yeah. That is bad. Um, But I think think when everyone got mad at that, 
I get mad at those adverts for a different reason. I think they're showing you a model who's been photoshopped. Everyone's like, everything photoshopped. But also, the supplements didn't make her look like that. She's probably running some sort of steroids. Or why, taking why are you something. saying running? Because you run gear for a cycle. Okay. Oh, I've never done it. Run gear for I've never done it personally. Wordplay. Um, I generally haven't. Mm -hmm. Probably in my 30s, I would. Okay. Definitely run a bit of tests with when I get older. That, we're straying off the subject today. We have a really good subject. Okay. When we're talking about steroids. Well, uh, partly because I hate my, I hate the way I look sometimes. Oh, wow. Because this is what we're talking about. That's vulnerability. Right? That's vulnerability right there. Was it because you took steroids and it made your dick shrink? I've not done steroids, but <laughs> I have not got much to sacrifice on penis length, but I'll just take a little bit to look fucking extra ripped. How much? How often do you stare at yourself naked in the mirror? Not as much as my screen time. You stare at your screen time more than yourself naked. In well, the I would like to. I like to think everyone does, but I, I definitely do. But that's part of going to the gym, isn't it? Is you get body dysmorphic. That's what nobody talks about when you go and start getting. If you go start lifting weights and getting fit, it never ends. You're never at a point of happiness. It's always I don't like this about myself. Oh, this muscle's not as in, this isn't as symmetrical as this, and it's just this ever ongoing cycle. That's why I don't go to the gym, because you know I I I'm anti perfection. You're anti perfection. Yeah, it's just like if I get too perfect, do you know what I mean? That would be bad for my mental health. So that's why I just stay out of the gym. I think you already think of yourself as pretty godlike. I don't mean I just you know. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm, I'm like I'm not saying I'm the perfect man, but like oh, okay. I'm very very, very noble of flaws, you. very few flaws. As a human being. Do you remember one time when uh -oh. you were asked when you last cried and you said it's because you thought of yourself dying and yeah. the world missing you? Yeah, yeah. I thought, doesn't everybody do that? The like, world? I just, like, imagine how sad everyone's going to be at my funeral. And I'm just like, I was sad for them. I wish I could watch my funeral. I wish I could watch my funeral. Mm. I'd want to see what everyone said. I'd want to see who turned up that I didn't want there. Yeah. That is... Uh, You're going to have bouncers at your funeral? No, but I would just be like, oh, this prick. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm wearing Jordans to your funeral. I'm like, I'm coming <laughs> in, a, in a... Very disrespectful. I'm coming in a tracksuit. Bro, stop. You're one of those guys where you'd have one of those funerals where everyone turns up in football shirts. <laughs> uh. You know, you know one of those funerals where you know, that's so into football that everyone turns up yeah, in that's, a football That's normally shirt. like when a 10-year-old dies, though. It's, very, it's normally a reason. <laughs> This is, this is quite thickish. <laughs> if I had to go to a funeral and they were like, wear your best football shirt, I'd be like, do you know what, yeah? <laughs> like, like, do you know what? I'm not going, innit? I've never been to funerals, but I always think, like, if I start going to, like, multiple funerals, eventually I'm going to start, like, ranking them. Like, like, this one is good. This one is good as... They can be good. Right. They're weird. The, the, the funeral itself is sad. Mm -hmm. The after part is actually quite fun if you go to a wake. Mm. Is that, it's just a big piss up. Yeah. It's quite good fun. Would you ever go to a funeral of someone you hated just to rub it in? Just to make sure they're dead. Yeah. Oh, just to go there and as everyone's having nice words about them, just sit in the corner with a Guinness, raise a glass, like, like something out of a Clint Eastwood film. You just raise a glass to him and in your mind you're thinking, fucking glad. <laughs> I'm glad that cunt's dead. Or like when everyone's growing up to like talk to the open cars kit, you could just whisper like one last message in their ear, like uh, burning hell or something like that. I'm going to try to fuck your wife. <laughs> 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 that, I bet that's happened at a funeral. You yeah. Know? And then they wake up, you know. Uh, well, did you bring them back to life <laughs> and you're like, why did I come? Your hate could revive them. Mm. What do you make of hate? What do I make of hate? Yeah. What do you, that's this week's topic is hate the topic of hate i think hate serves a purpose Ooh. i think hate serves a purpose i think personally i think hate if utilized right it can be the path to healing it's the first step of healing yeah it is yeah i agree do you know what i mean we've been through a situation you you, you you start with hate like with the purest of emotions and then you work out what to do with those emotions have you ever acted on hate have i ever acted on hate I couldn't imagine you hating someone. I'm very um I I keep a journal. I think I think one at Jamali's. Yeah, I uh we have we have a comedian friend, Jamali Maddox, and 
I left my backpack at his house and it's full of journals where I have written very uh, despicable things about Jamali and have you? in them. Oh, I've really—is that true? Yeah, I've written some real bad shit about you guys. How I really feel. I thought you were joking. Nah, how I really feel about you guys is in there, and I, I'm scared Jamali has read that because you know that's now a weapon formed against me. But that's uh, what I mean. Wait, is it is it is it the kind of stuff that would make us fall out? It's the type of stuff where I couldn't make eye contact with you anymore if you read it. Are you serious? How I really feel about you. Is it, it like, but it's that, not like you fucking us or anything like that, is it? That I don't know. I could deal with you hating. Excuse me? What do you mean? Like, it's not like some weird like porn. Some weird fan fiction. Yeah, some weird thing like where <laughs> me and Jamali are like fucking and you're watching. It's nothing like that, is it? No, it's just like how I, like maybe you've done something and I wrote like, nah, man, I hate Elliot the way he breathes. Do you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Bro, I <laughs> gave you the ick. <laughs> right. I gave my friend the ick. Right. Just, just like, just things that to get out of my system. And then once that's what that's, have I done that's annoyed you? You've never done anything that's annoyed me. Never done anything that's no, annoyed you. Not really. You. No, I'm quite. But I'm very easy going. I've put you down as easy going. But it's all the front. I am easy going because I get it out of my system, in my journals. You've never done anything that. I, the only time I could think that I uh, I annoyed you was when me and Jamali gave you a roasting. Do you remember in Shoreditch? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is what this is what you're angry yeah, about. I might, I might have written in that my diary that day. <laughs> This was a 30 minute beatdown where I knew we annoyed Mike because he came back with personal. <laughs> like he came back and started bringing up our relationships <laughs> and our thoughts. And it was like, with me and Jamali were like looking at each other going, going, Whoa, 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 right, right, right. And so me and Jamali started doing about how you brought, you brought it personal. Yeah, I probably wrote in my diary about that. But that's, 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 that's um. <laughs> but I, that's what I mean about the, the the journey of hate. You you, I think once you address so you, the hate and you get it out of your head, and either you know with a therapist you talk to them about it or you get it on the page, you process it and you're like, oh, you know what? I'm getting Jamali on with those with that notepad. We have to find out what's in them. Nah, I mean it's to your detriment. Do you know is what it mean? how? What's the? We might end the podcast really? based on. What, <laughs> is it that bad? If you want to keep this 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 business business that makes no money going, <laughs> you shouldn't read them. Is uh, uh, sorry, I just want to know how bad is it? Like on a scale of. On a scale. On, I, I think the listeners. If I was a listener listening to this episode now, I'd want to know a slight example of what was in there. No, you, it's about it's about six or it's my personal six six things six six or seven on the scale of like it's might be might oh like, six or seven on the scale right oh that's quite high is that quite high that's quite high I don't know but I feel like that that's for me to like get out and so I can have and then I next time I see you never even knew yeah I had those things it, about you you left it. At our I, mate's house and then told him, <laughs> by the way, there's a journal. And he messaged me going, I've read the journal and it's spicy. <laughs> it is spicy. But I thought he was joking. I thought this was a bit when you said you'd written about us in no, the group no, chat. Written, no. But you've actually done that. I've written about you guys, yeah. Do you, do, have you, is, is this mental to you as well, Phoebe? Well, n okay, no. So I shouldn't call it mental. That's probably why you write things in there. Yeah, that's right. Because you're careless with your words. Is that, that, sorry, I am careless. Is that why? Did that annoy you when I said that's mental? No. All right, so that wouldn't end up in there. It might, it might as a thought. Did you hear how careless with his words like actually had like a tone of truth to, to it? I bet that's in there. Yeah, I, I mean, I can see in Mark's eyes he doesn't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's trying to get it back onto the, the, <laughs> the subject. subject. Of... That, no, but I'm remaining on hate because I want to bring it back on. But I don't hate you. I know, I know. That's what I'm saying. So it's a way to do with healing. So at right. one point in time, so what is hate? So at one point in time, I've done something to annoy you, right. like this now, and there's a way to get over the, the healing of it. Yeah, because for me, that's just like, writing down my thoughts of something that's happened on a particular day. So for me, I don't even get close to hate because I oh. deal with my emotions on a daily basis. If I, if you done something and I just let it like fester, like over time, I don't address it. It's just in my head. I never bring it up with you. Then of course that might turn into hate, but I deal with my emotions on a regular basis. And so like, I'm cool. And if there's anything you've done, I've, we've probably either already addressed it or I can look at it in a way like, ah, there's so many good qualities oh. about Elliot and Jamali. Is there a book with my good qualities in it? That's not, that, that hasn't happened yet. Um, 
it's, it's very hateful chapters in there. It's very, 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 really. I'm telling you, you don't want to read this stuff. You don't want to open that door. How, how, you know how you say you put everything in that you're feeling in a day? How mm. small, how insignificant can it be? How throwaway a comment can it be? Oh my goodness. But like for me, like the journals aren't just like to, to collect, you know, gripes. It can just be very mundane activities that's happened in a day. And I'm like, you know what? I'd rather put this in a journal then bore somebody with it. It could be the washing machine breaking down and I'm angry at that. I might write about that for a couple paragraphs. I feel like you're the kind of guy who in years to come would release his journals in like a term of you came successful and mm. it'd be kind of like a Kanye documentary thing where you'd go, I'm glad he documented his washing machine breaking down or just to see his reaction to that as a thing, mm. just to know it, it, it's very human. Do you know, in like a way, do you know with like celebrities when you hear them moan about something like that to take their car service and it just brings you to like, oh my God, you have to do mundane, right. boring activities as well. I forget you're a person like Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt at some point has been in a coffee shop and they fucked up his order and he's like yeah. to stand there and be like, oh, what the? Brad Pitt has had diarrhea, you know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just, you know, jotting those things down. I think when I die, I'm going to have the juiciest experts of my journal read out. At your funeral. Just about all the people in, in, in the audience will see how I really felt about them at one point or another in time. Would you come over on a screen? Do you like know what? That's even room? better. I would, like, do you remember in Coachella in 2011, they got like that hologram of Tupac? Yeah. I'm going to get a hologram of myself just saying how I really feel about people. Do you know what's hilarious is if no one turns up to your funeral <laughs> and you've, you've spent all the money in that and it's just like the priest, <laughs> priest doing the funeral and like one guy and the people, the people you have to pay to bring your coffin in. It'll be so expensive. <laughs> and you've, nobody else turn up. It'll be a big production, 500 grand minimum. <laughs> I, uh, I find uh, I'm very bad at dealing with hate. Uh, maybe I should keep a journal. I mean, because you you just told us you started on this story of how you I think very maturely dealt with a situation that could have turned hateful. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm, I'm really trying to work on myself. That's mm. my new thing for for not not just focus on comedy and stuff. Focus on my own attitudes towards. So because that that thing happened right, and you were feeling hateful, and you kind of transferred that energy into something good. So do you think hate? can be a good force, a force for good. I guess, and this is what I want to bring up, someone sent me a very good uh, a very good subject, so I just want to shout them out quickly because this is this is perfect for what we're talking about. Thank you for all the responses to our subject about hate on the B-Tech Philosophers uh, Instagram. But yeah, it was essentially that. It was uh, the driving force of hate, having hate drive you, which we touched on last week, is... Uh, is it a, if a good thing comes from a bad place, mm. now not necessarily to say hate is a bad thing to have mm. because it is an emotion. And sometimes we talk about being emotionally open, but what does that mean? Like you found a way of dealing with it, whereas I probably let it, let it fester in me. But a lot of hatred, you know, I think everyone has a thing where they sort of hate themselves a little bit. And when people say hate themselves, it don't mean, do you not? Hate myself? Yeah. No. Oh God, I hate myself sometimes. Whoa. But not like in a. So like, don't worry, I'm not gonna jump off a bridge. You wouldn't. I don't I'd, think that's how you kill yourself. No, nah, I'd, I'd gentleman suicide, hanging, not not fuck up anyone's day, getting a train or a bus or something. You know what I mean? You've, you've really thought about this. I wouldn't fuck up everyone's day. Yeah. It's, I it's, mean, it's rude. Just your immediate family's life. Oh yeah, they have to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging's pretty. Brutal. Would you not want to like poison yourself or something? No, I'd go out, go out like a go out with a hanger. It's, it's, then you it's... then you're just like you know lying asleep. Someone thinks you're asleep and actually you're dead. Rather than having to like find you legs dangling through the front door. Drowning. That's terrifying. Drowning. Drowning is not nice. Yeah, it's not nice. It's not nice. Yeah. Drowning is quite. Uh, quite it was meant to be a horrible experience. Let's get out of this topic immediately. Heroin. That's how I do yeah, it. Yeah. Heroin. What? Yeah. Heroin. How do you know how much to, to give yourself? We'll find out. I'm going to take a stab at it. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to kill myself. No, but I, what I'm saying is my point about this is like there's bits of self hate of things I've done in my life where like there's been times where I've not stood up for myself or back when I was a kid and got picked on. So a version of me 
hate younger me for that, but I've also got to forgive myself for that because I was young and I didn't know any better. Or there's times where you, not even that deep, you, you wake up the next day, you've been drinking, and you're like, oh, I hate myself. What did I say last night? That fear after drinking that kicks in. That's a level of hate that I think if you keep having that after you drink, you probably need to look at yourself and go, I should stop drinking as much. Right? So, so the hate of oneself can do a good thing. I think the problem with that, so maybe hating yourself sometimes isn't a bad thing. That That's what you're talking about, like a journal or something like that. But I think if you hate yourself to the point where it's like, oh, I want to end myself, that's when you need to seek out help. And that, that's probably a brain dysfunction. Or maybe you did something like really bad. There's people. Yeah, because who... that, that seems like it's almost like you hating yourself and then there's like two paths down the road. It can be inspirational and be like, I'm a change stuff. Or it can be the other way. I'm a change things permanently and by ending everything yeah or you can think i think people who hate themselves sometimes then just start hating the world and hating on others because they're not listening to that bit of their thing that they probably when they, they say they hate they blame themselves, yeah they hate a certain part of themselves that makes them do something i always wonder with so the idea of coming with hate i guess is forgiveness like you're talking about if you're working on a route of i don't like this person but holding on to hate just makes my life difficult for me personally anyway. And I think I think for most people. So then the next part you have to work on is forgiveness. And people, I think people can mistake forgiveness for weakness, mm. in my opinion. You know, do you forgive? For example, if you're, if you were put in a prisoner of war camp or a, a concentration camp, can you ever forgive the people who did that for you? And what yeah, does it mean? Obviously there's a lot of people, maybe they've been wronged and then, then they spend their life seeking revenge and that revenge can consume them, that mm -hmm. the pursuit of it. And even, even if they, they do kind of exact revenge, you know, maybe they'll get in trouble for it, go to prison, life's ruined, or maybe the person that they've now become, they can't necessarily go back to maybe a pure version of themselves. You know, I, I remember reading a quote and it said a man who holds on to a hot piece of coal with the intention to throw at somebody only ends up burning himself. It's a good quote. I think uh, we were reading the same articles last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said. Uh, <laughs> There's a, I'm so glad because I was going to say I made up that quote, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad I didn't say that. You're going to try and get away with, with what is quite a famous quote. Yeah, well, you're gonna come on this one. I came up with. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've been musing. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely glad I saw that. Not what your country can yeah. do for you, but what you can do for. Are you sure? I'm sure that was Jeff. No, 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 no that was me. Yeah. I, I made that up. We we spitballed some ideas. And maybe. He did. <laughs> yeah, I was his, I was his ghostwriter. Who 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 have you ever? Have you ever actually hated someone? Have I ex? Have, I don't I don't think so. I I've been quite lucky in my life where nobody's really wronged me um to the point where I felt like I got to that level or I couldn't rationalize it. I'm I'm, I'm very good at kind of like trying to step into another person's shoes mm. and trying to understand where they were coming from because I I often think like most people are just trying to get by. Do you know what I mean? Most yeah. people aren't out to wrong you. So maybe there was something that happened or misunderstanding that, that made them do a certain thing. And I could potentially be in that very same situation myself one day. I remember last week you were talking about, you know, wallets. If you found a wallet with 200 pounds in it, would you would you give it back? And if somebody took that wallet from me and they didn't give the 200 pounds back, I believe I could rationalize it and be like, do you know what, maybe, maybe they needed that money in that particular situation. Now, I'm not saying that that comes immediately, well, I, I'm able to rationalize it where I don't hang on to the feelings yeah. for too long. Once you've once you've made like a voodoo doll of them, once you've made a little 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 ritual, and then you, <laughs> you, you get over it. <laughs> but the reason I, I was even asking that question yeah. about hate because I was reading this story a couple of days ago in the news about Facebook. They will allow for countries uh, to call for violence against Russians in Russian shoulders in like the context of the the like the Ukraine in, in, invasion which obviously they have like hate speech policies and they've kind of like broken this to like for allow people to to like basically be hateful in this specific circumstance. And I'm just kind of thinking, once you turn on the tap of hate, you can't just turn it off again. Is this is this setting a dangerous precedent or is this a positive thing in terms of people allowing people to voice their hate, uh, which you could argue is justified hate in a 
in a meaningful way. But then should you not allow the Russian hate of uh, Ukrainian people who are shooting at Ukrainians? It's, it's, you, could, you could get into a debate of it's the same, it's, it's from different sides, but same outcome of even, even though people are invading, if, if all life is precious, people being killed are invaders. So do they not have the right to then speak their hate? In terms of like a Russian soldier, they, don't, they probably don't know about the inner politics of why they're even fighting. They've just been told yeah. to fight. And if their life has been taken, that family would be justified in, in feeling anger and upset about the person who killed them. Yeah. But that's what I mean. Like, can you have specific, is it, is it even right to have specific precedents? So, so we've got it with the law anyway, right? With the hate speech laws. There yeah. are laws. Mike could look at me really blankly. No, 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 I was no, waiting for oh, more context. Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, there are laws. so at the moment, like Meta have hate, like rules against hate speech, mm -hmm. which I'm assuming go against like laws, like national, international laws. Oh, is, is that, do you mean, when you say Meta, you mean Facebook? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'll touch on that in a second, but yeah. So, well, I was going to say, so they've lifted some of their, like, or they've changed some of their hate speech regulations, but as long as it still goes, it's still all legal it will still come under free speech, wouldn't it? Yeah, so this is this is my thing I was gonna say, it, and it's not slightly, it's slightly, it's not really to do with philosophy, maybe it's more to do, they're a company, and these companies, uh, Google, Meta, Amazon, they're now bigger than countries. They don't have borders, so they can govern themselves. And like the new sort of dictatorships, in my opinion, will come from them because money talks in the society we live in. So they can dictate rules. This is an example I don't think of, should you be allowed to hate? Because I, I would say to your answer, if you're going to have free speech, unfortunately you have to have free speech. Now that doesn't mean you don't have freedom of consequence for what you say, which is what people mistake all the time, which is why you see hack comedians go on and then shout, the n-word uh, with no joke or anything in it mm. or say something about trans people that's just uh, they should all be burnt at the stake what do you mean i can't say it this is mm. comedy and they hide behind the free speech thing which there is a point for but then when people go i think that's wrong of you to say that then they they go against suffering the consequence of it whereas with facebook meta google and all these places I think that they now are in complete control of whatever the social narrative is. And they actually come from it a lot of the time from a odd capitalist left wing angle, but then will swing right wing when it need. It's very, it's very weird to see in real time. Do you make it, what do you make of it? I mean, in, in, in terms of this particular Ukraine situation, it seems to have been, um, uh, morally, it, it, it seems very clear Russians are wrong, um, Ukrainians are good. That's kind of the way yeah. it, it seems to be in the way it's been sort of painted by the media as, as well. So it's very easy for them to um, allow a law like this because for them it's like, ah, it's, it's fine to, but like but if it, it went- It's not a law, it's a, it's a company policy. Policy, right. But then if it was something like Palestinians then asking, well, why can't we um, have hateful, be able to call for deaths of whatever's going on in our situation, then they wouldn't allow it because then it's like, oh, politics and, and, and business is a bit more that's, that's involved in that. So you can argue that it's not really a, um, a genuine purpose that they're doing this. And it, it's probably gonna lead to more hypocrisy across the board if you've set this precedent, because then other people in situation gonna be like, we should also be allowed to do this without having our posts removed. Yeah, that's what I also find. Also it's a, sorry. oh sorry to cut you off. No, 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 go it's ahead. A, go ahead. It's Western companies dictating mm -hmm. what's happening in areas that they, also a politically like if you think about it like meta is american mm. very like dicey relationship with like well yeah with everything with russia they have a lot of like connections with russia plus also with like palestine and stuff there's they've got lots of vested interests everywhere so that's why i'm wondering what laws they're going by obviously they're governing it themselves but like what international laws are they going by they don't they don't have to go by any international laws because they're no, bigger than they don't have to so it's just they're picking which bat like then it does become political doesn't and like like subjective well it's why it's why uh, yeah so sorry no, i just want to say but if they let's say they have every business right because their own company to say you can post this on our platform have they set a dangerous precedent by saying you can mobilize your hate in this way on our platform by calling for the death of 
of um, other people. Will it do? Will it? Will it do anything? Will I, it be influential enough for this? Because they said in that article that you sent, it said that they wouldn't tolerate hate speech towards a per- one person if it had like a actual threat. Yeah, like, but I guess I guess the thing is, if you if you're the hate spreads like fire in it. So if you're a person and you're allowed to call for the death of something as a whole, I think eventually it, it, it starts becoming individual and then it could start just becoming, you know, against individual Russians in your head. You might not be able to post it, but because you see so many of that, it just becomes against just individuals in your head. It comes normalized as well. And then it, like you said, it spreads like fire. It's a, it's a normalized thing to do. That's why you find groups, whenever you watch those EDL rallies or anything like that, and uh, not to say, it was surprising about them. Ashley and Jamali's documentaries, you see some people there are quite intelligent, you see some, but most of the people there haven't got anything and then someone offers them, they've grown up probably hating themselves, hating the situation they're in. So it's an emotion you come accustomed to and then you use it a lot. So the idea of hating someone isn't that big a deal. So then the idea of hating a group of people isn't that big a deal and you can blame those it's easier to blame a group of people for problems than it is to blame maybe yourself i don't think it's these people themselves because it's circumstantial but also the government and system you live in because hate hate's easier to weaponize than love that's why you have a right it's sexier it's it's a lot sexier but you get more done yeah i mean you know they wouldn't have invaded poland with love it's just true we wouldn't have done it. It was the love it's of the of, blondes. Um, it's I a method you. of... I'm just cutting that yeah, yeah, weird yeah, thought process up. It. It's a method of asserting yourself against your opponent. Because if you're like, you're so disgusting, I hate you, I hate everything you believe in and stand for because I'm the very opposite and therefore mm. I'm good. Like That's yeah. your way of you like, know, reasserting like, yourself as if, well. If I was a young black man in 1960s America and I saw Malcolm X's message of like, fuck these white people do you know what i mean like what they're gonna kick you kick yeah. them back and then i had martin luther king being like hey guys we got to turn the other cheek we got to respond with love of course i'm gonna go with a malcolm x message do you know what i mean because it's like i'm yeah I've been, i'm cool being love. oppressed i want to respond to oppression with anger with with violence i don't want to respond to it with with love do you know what i mean that don't make sense and then even malcolm x once he came back from mecca he had a much more love filled message and then he ended up getting assassinated anyway <laughs> do you know what i mean so i don't know well he, he didn't he get assassinated by the nation of islam yeah because he went against a message of sort of separatism and like fuck these guys and he was going for more like we're all in this together message but that's the problem when you start galvanizing with hate when you start leading by hate and then try to turn back round it it goes wrong because you've led a lot of people to an angry place that's why whenever you watch Two, two groups of people I watch do this. I'm not trying to say it because I, I try to remain apolitical in everything I do, even though I lean left. I, I believe there's good thing, right wing things. I think there's good left wing things. I think there's bad on both sides. Two groups of people that I see play with this a lot. And I, I'm coming from a comedy standpoint here because that's what I know. People who lean ultra left wing and get left wing people to cancel people and dig things up on stuff. And they start fucking with that audience. And then one day somebody finds something that they've done mm. and then it turns round, mm. and they've galvanized all these people like we hate these we're righteous because like you said they're coming from a place of i'm good i'm morally correct and then they do something and then all of a sudden that tidal wave that they've created turns on them yeah some of the most entertaining shit i've ever watched i i don't i don't feel bad for them i don't mm. feel good i'm not like good ha 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 but i i think that's what you were you are leading people in an angry frenzy there. So yeah, it's like what you're saying. Once you try and mobilize on hate, you can't turn that tap off. It's like like, like a fire. You can't control it. You don't know which way it's going to go and it can end up turning back on you and everything that you thought at the beginning you were trying to do can end up being destroyed. But I'd, I'd, just to be, I know you didn't like it for the general thing, I'd forgive anything you'd say or something because you're my mate. Like I always put that down my relationship with people. Mm. I always think most of the time people don't do things uh, that I would find annoying or makes me dislike someone. For for example, sometimes friends can fall out quite easily, especially with WhatsApp groups and things like that. And I've done that where I've been a dick in a WhatsApp group or someone's been a dick to me or you catch someone on the wrong day and you're like, I hate this guy, fuck him. But then I remember, actually I'm friends with these people and I'm taking something out of context and I'm a person with feelings and sometimes my feelings are going to make me get things wrong. Mm-hmm. 
which is why you shouldn't, which is why when we're talking about processing hate, you can't just, I don't know. Do you know what I fucking hate, bruv? People who don't, people like on the underground, yeah, who just stand in the way of shit. That I hate. You hate that. That that I am not forgiving. P I can forgive. I can forgive people for a lot of wrong. Yeah. I'm not. I'm genuinely not. Uh, I've got a short fuse, but with stupid things. With the small things. With the small things set me off. But the genuinely big things, I've forgiven people. And I say forgiven. I don't let them back in my life. Yeah. Because that's not what forgiveness is. Yeah. But I can forgive people for big things. But. If you stand on the left side of the escalator when I'm trying to walk down it, a plague on your house. I think anything, <laughs> anything. <laughs> a plague on your house. Anything transport related, I do, yeah. Do you know what? Because there was this this one time I was on the train and um, this woman, she was just a bit, like, you know when some people put the, their seat on the bag? I uh, do you know what I mean? When it's a packed train, it's unacceptable. Do you know what I mean? And she was just a bit like, uh, about taking a bag so a human being could sit down on the... And to this day, I still think about, like, I didn't say nothing. And that is the one thing where I could write about in my journal every day and it would just eat me up. I'm like, oh, man, that fucking... Because you, you hate yourself for not saying anything. I didn't say nothing. You didn't... You don't... You, you're angry at yourself. Not that you hate yourself. Mm. You're annoyed at yourself for not saying something, even though you knew it was the right thing to do. Right. Do you yeah. think do you think hate is a feeling or do you think it's a concept and it's a like oh. like you know how love is kind of a concept and it's a bunch of different emotions that you feel all the time? Is hate like anger a bit like that? Oh or is shit, it, I never considered is that. It a, Sorry. Is it a once is it a sort of like um so anger is a is a emotion where it happens like straight away, like you feel it viscerally, but then you can control it and then you can you don't have it's not a feeling that you have to feel constantly. Mm. Is hate that? Is it like an impulse that you can then control? Or is it a feeling that you harbour and you feed and harbour over time? Do you know, I'm, I, I was reading this book by Bell Hooks called All About Love. And she, she says that love is a choice. You When you choose to love somebody, there's certain responsibilities that come with that. And I think, I think maybe that's the same with hate. You know, like in terms of anger, anger is like you said, is, is immediate. You feel angry. But then the decision to hate is actively controlled by you because you can let that go. I'm not saying you let that go easily. It'll take work, maybe years of work, but you can let that go. And some people, they actively use hate as motivation. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, You've used that in your career, I'm sure. Um, Maybe like that's spite, different in terms spite, of... Spite, maybe. Not, when, when someone told you you're not, hey man, I don't think you're good enough to play here. Yeah, but I think that's yeah, that's just like using like a, almost like pettiness as motivation. So and was, would that have been though? Would that have been motivation driven by hate of that person's comment, or is it striving to be better? Because you can reframe it in different ways, can you? Would it still be hate? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't call it hate because I I normally associate hate with negativity. But it doesn't necessarily have to be, but in just in terms of my perception of it. So for me, if I immediately turn that energy and strive to be better, it's not hate anymore. Right. Do you, would you say though, like, sorry, relating it back to what you were saying, I think, I think, sorry, what you were saying, Phoebe, is that hate is a spectrum the same way as love is a spectrum. Like, I love sandwiches. Mm -hmm. I don't love them. Like, I, I wouldn't go, oh, you know, if it's a choice between sandwiches or, or, or someone in my family, I'm going to choose someone in my family. So it's, so it's a spectrum. I love Crystal Palace. Mm -hmm. well, I've, I've actually had to distance myself with my football club because of how it was making me feel. That's part of my self-improvement. I don't allow football to dictate my week anymore because I, I, I used to get very hateful. Some of my behaviour was unacceptable at the games. Nothing bad. I wasn't throwing coins at players or booing the knee, mm. but I was... Uh, well, you uh, brought it up, but nobody I, else... Well, nobody you, else. I was looking at you because Chelsea fan, your club. No, no, no. <laughs> nobody else brought up booing the knee. You just had to... You had to uh, let, let that be clear that you weren't doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not lie. I've got a vibe like I defended a statue <laughs> in lockdown. <laughs> you were there, though. You were there. I was there, I was there in passing. <laughs> no, if I, the CCTV cameras would show you in the area. Bro, I would like to get this person on the podcast maybe one day. I have a black friend who went and defended statues. Oh, really? Yes. What was his reasoning? Which one? 
he is an immigrant to this country and was like, I went to watch a the British people defend their right to Isn't British. Isn't that guy in the Union Jack suit and the Union Jack no, top hat? No, no, no. He's, he's, he's a sound dude. I know him through Muay Thai. He, okay. He's a really good Muay Thai fighter. Like, fought, him, fought in Bellator and stuff, but he went and... Uh, he went and, and I, I then spoke to some mutual friends of ours, and my mutual friends who were also black were like, "Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to tell anyone what to do, but yeah, because he you, does Muay Thai, you, you can't. No, really no not even that. They all do Muay Thai, so it wouldn't have been. It wasn't. They're not going to start fighting each other over it. But they, there was a little bit of like, yeah. They, one of my friends was like, "You're just going to be the black guy that they all point to and be like, see, this isn't racism. Yeah, there's a black guy here." Right, right, yeah. And then they ignore all the other black people going, this makes no, us no. feel very, <laughs> very, very bad and uncomfortable that you're defending statues of slavers or people <laughs> who've oppressed us. And Churchill and that. Yeah. Eh, but, but my point, uh, actually, sorry, on so hates the spectrum, but on statue defending, one thing I've tried to do is view it from those people's perspective. From the... the um the, the side that's portrayed as hateful in the media if we're going to talk about things like twitter on that day it's perfectly acceptable to take the piss out of these now that i'm not trying to be like a white genocidal about it but there's an issue especially in the white community where uh working class lower working class white people um find it very difficult you've got the cost of living you've got all of these things going on that they're affected by there isn't grants there isn't schemes to help them they live in a town that's been absolutely brutalized by austerity mm. so who they've got to blame the new people who are moved into their poor town where it, this is where you go to live if you haven't got much money well that's usually first generation immigrants so mm -hmm. it's very easy for them to blame these people and have hate because it's easier than like we're saying the right-wing press so then you're always brought up that Churchill was amazing was all that you don't necessarily understand the history or you do understand the history of it and you've made your mind up that he was a good guy there is an argument to be made for that I think they just wanted a day out no they wanted a day out you got some dark fruits yeah why uh, not <laughs> Bit of a it scrap. It's a bit of a scrap. <laughs> stop, yeah, stop trying to give a guardian no, uh, explanation. No, no, no. I wanted a day out. You wanted a day out. statue in it. No, but, but this is my point from seeing it from another perspective. You see it as an attack on your sovereignty. It's like QAnon. If you are, if you truly believe in QAnon, technically you did a right, the right thing by going and storming. You think there's an evil cabal of paedophiles. You think that that's going on. So you've gone and stormed a place where you think all the paedophiles are. That's in, if it's crazy as that is. A cabal of paedophiles. There's a cabal of paedophiles. As crazy as that is, you've done, you've been brainwashed. How responsible are you? Yeah, you are. In their eyes, they are the heroes. In your, they're right. Now, you're fucking mental. Mm. You're a moron. And they're probably, statistically, there probably is a paedophile in there. That's a good point. How many people would should have died at the Capitol? How many pe how many innocents is it worth killing to get one pedophile? And is it right to kill a pedophile? We'll save that for the Patreon. Well, yeah, we'll save that. We're gonna. We're, yeah, why don't Why don't you message B Tech B Tech philosophers? With, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll source a pedophile we'll, and we'll, we'll ask him: Is it all right to kill you, dude? Imagine we got a pedo on this podcast, like a like a reform pedo. You had Victoria last week. Oh, whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> The, the view shared by oh, Phoebe. The view oh, shared just because he's Catholic doesn't mean that he nope. engages in pedophilia, Phoebe. <laughs> this is why we didn't say your name, Phoebe. It's for legal reasons. Yeah, because producer Phoebe, but pedophile Phoebe. Yeah. So. <laughs> would would that's that's an interesting moral question? Yeah. So there's a more, uh, there's a UFC fight. I believe it's Cain Velasquez. Who could be anybody. I let me so. just look that up quickly because I don't want to be dumb for liable. Not in the way that you think. There's a UFC fighter, Cain Velasquez, right? Who was a excellent, excellent fighter. Uh -huh. He ended up, I believe, killing... Uh, he's getting done for um, attempted murder. Okay. Because... Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, I've just found articles. Yeah. So his... Uh, I believe it was daughter had been who uh, very very young very it was very sad had been molested several times by this guy. He then drove after him for twelve miles and shot the guy. Now, he, as in the guy was running and he was driving, or they were both in cars. They were both in cars. He okay. did the guy didn't outrun his car for twelve miles. Okay, yeah. In which case, I think, I think just on that merit alone, he should be allowed to live. I mean, I feel like. If anything, there would be a part of me as an athlete, you'd be like, I maybe need to train this guy. 
turn his life around. I've been <laughs> driving off in full pelt for 12 uh, miles. Hey, what he, what, what he did was wrong, but you, you can't <laughs> deny his cardio is impressive. <laughs> when, uh, but he, um, so he shot the guy, he's being done for a, attempted murder, but there's an argument being made that he shouldn't have to go to jail because, and I, I agree with this as well, just my own personal opinion. I think if somebody has absolutely done something like that and the family take retribution, although vigilante justice will get it wrong every now and then, that jail isn't good enough for someone like, you You go, you go, come accustomed to jail. Yeah, but that's why we have a, a justice system so everyone just can't take you know it into their own hands. There has to be- I guess you're right. There has to be a structure in place. You can't just say this particular hateful action is justified. But you understand where they come you from. You understand where they come from, but you know you, you still have to, and you can have leniency maybe when you're sentencing them, but you can't just let them free like that. Because then, what about what about this as a moral situation? Okay. So with this one, the guy who he was like trying to shoot had molested. Yeah. People. So like he had definitely done something wrong. The law will definitely recognize that well hopefully recognize that and deal with that mm -hmm. but what if it was for something a lot smaller like that kind of thing but it was small like in, in like it wasn't a big big court case you're in like a small little village you have your family all there someone has like said something inappropriate to like your little sister or something the police aren't going to do anything would you take matters into your own hands? Yeah, in bang them out. Fuck them. You know, yeah. Because in that scenario, you know that the justice system isn't going to back you up. So then is it okay to like yeah, take matters in your own hands? Because this is my thing with... Uh, I had a situation like this where I dragged up a, a security guard in a, in Lidl in Brixton because um, he, he uh, with my girlfriend at the time, had uh, sexually harassed her. So I... I beat him up? I went to, but oh, bro, have I not told you this story? You might have done. The guy, uh, you Cheryl called him. No, nah, uh, <laughs> I didn't Cheryl call him. He tried to accuse me of Cheryl calling him. He uh, basically the little the, the shoppers in Little Brixton are a hardened shopper. You know, they they see a lot of that middle aisle throws up a lot of things. Yeah. Wait, but hang even, on. So he's security for Little. He's security for Little. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, my girlfriend at the time was holding a case of beers. We had just come from the gym. She was in a gym top. He, she put that, he was like, you can't hold the beers to her, you can't hold the beers. Now, I thought it was to do with dropping the beers. She did the thing of putting them down, comes back up. There's a vibe. I'm sure you can back me up on this, Phoebe. I hadn't noticed what had quite happened. He'd basically used that to check her out. I'm a guy. I don't notice these things. So she was suddenly, a li the vibe was a little bit different. So I asked her what was up. She didn't want to tell me. I didn't know what it was. I pressed a little bit. Turns this out. Now, I took matters into my own hand and went and dragged him up in the shop and was like, you're going to go say sorry now and like had him up against the the thing. <laughs> Do you know what's so funny? Is if he beat you up, your girlfriend would have got the ick. Oh, <laughs> bro, imagine he <laughs> fucked me up. <laughs> bro, could you, could you imagine you go over there, like you talking to my girlfriend, and he just bang, bang, bang. Next thing I know, she's like, she's like checking him out. <laughs> no, she, oh my. No, because what would happen is that walk home would be so quiet. <laughs> the drive home. Well, I've got, I've got like an ice pack. I'm like, I've got the frozen beast. On my eye. Bro, if I lost a fight in front of a street fight in front of a girl I was dating I couldn't see her again it's instant I could not see her again I really? would I you wouldn't you wouldn't even let her like Florence Nightingale you and look after you no I had a, you back to health I had a fight after a, a guy again pushed a girl I was with after the football one time and uh it it uh it it it, it was it, it wasn't much of a fight but uh, I, I did I, I if there was if there was a judge's scorecard you could say I won mm um quite convincingly and he she then knew the guy it was all very weird and went round and said i lost the fight and so i stopped seeing her just because of that because i was like you're just talking you're talking nonsense but also i took a hit on my ego when she told my mates that i lost i genuinely was like what the f which is again very toxic of me but it comes from a place so i'm in little i've got this guy up by the the thing he he clearly, and this is an assumption, he clearly had static with a lot of the staff there because they still served us after this scene. And the other security oh, guard- Oh, that's capitalism, yeah, that's just profit. Yeah. No, the other guy, the other security guard came up to me and was like, cause so 
it was amazing, right? He then, when a crowd gathered, I was like, this guy sexually harassed my girlfriend. This is also, bro, there's this move in jujitsu, yeah? So this is, let me just explain this to like people how grappling and stuff works, right? It's based on body type a lot of the time. So for example, if you're a lot smaller, you might play a speed-based game. Whereas if you're quite big, you might play a pressure-based game. So you play the game deciding on what's your attribute. Now he had a move I hadn't seen before that I, I personally can't do called a race card. And oh, he- yes, <laughs> yes, most powerful. He, he, he reversed <laughs> this. Well, yeah. He turned to the people when he called me the N-word. The, wow. Yeah. Yeah, dude. So I go from South London holding this guy up by the scruff of the neck to like, hey, man, whoa, that's whoa, a very whoa, serious whoa. accusation. <laughs> and if you want to go through the channels, we can go through the channels. This old lady came and gave this rousing speech. This sweet old, this is during the pandemic. So this sweet old lady comes up, gives this rousing speech to us like, as, I, as I sort of had him up now a little bit less. Going like, is life not hard enough? Wow. Must we be at each other's throats? Is this what you want to be? And I felt like a thug, right? Do you want us to talk about you want to talk about losing the room? I go my my girlfriend at the time when that guy sexually harassed me, this old lady goes, "Well, you shouldn't be dressed like a whore." Wow. <laughs> She had us in the first half. She had us in the first half. <laughs> this old bitch, right? And I can call her that because of what she said. She, she nearly got a fucking applause break. Dude, she she would have been like some viral hero. She was so close. And then just out of nowhere, that 75-year-old way of thinking came in. So the other security guard came up. I'm now like, dude, I didn't call him. He, and he's going, I know, yeah. I know, I know. And the guy, I think, the other security guard, I think was drunk, like the yeah. way he was moving. And we'll, so when we're at the checkout, and he did he did a thing, this is what I'm trying to work on. He well. was drunk. He, I think so. When we were at the checkout, I was talking to the security guard, uh, not the security guard, the guy on the checkout about it. And he was like, yeah, yeah, he can be a bit, he can be a bit funny. He, he He's a bit weird. It, uh, so the staff were kind of in that thing of, because it was interesting how the staff didn't jump in to yeah. his defense. Yeah. It was because also they don't get paid enough for that shit. They don't get paid enough for that well, shit. Well, if he was an alcoholic, maybe he wasn't checking her out. He just wanted that beer. You can't have that beer. That's my beer. The beer shouldn't have been dressed like that, though. Yeah. <laughs> no. just, a, just a bare bottle. Maybe he no should. No label on it. He should have. Yeah, he was. Uh, this is the this is the move he did. And I don't know if there's any guys listening that, that pissed me off the most. I don't know if you've ever had this. He said something as we were leaving. Oh. That, that is what I, mm. that is a hate I have. After, if there's been a conflict, it's been resolved. Um, usually, if something goes wrong, I'm very, I'm, I usually will say, I try to say sorry. I try to admit when I'm wrong. Nothing, nothing as a man gives me the ick. Like when you see- Male two, ick. Male ick. ick. When you see people, two people have an argument and they have a conflict, yeah? And one guy goes to walk off and he's walking off and someone's like, dickhead, innit? it? Yeah. Oh. You turn back? I went to. And you girl stopped you? Uh, yeah, she was. She was. She was. She wasn't happy with my behaviour. All men love that when it's like when a woman's like, "It's not worth it." Get it's no, not worth it. If there's any women listening? Move out the way because you become an obstacle. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you know what I am? I'm like trying to make precision strikes <laughs> on the on the military base, and you're some civilian around <laughs> it now. And now I've got the UN moaning at me. <laughs> no, it's long if your girl's trying to get involved, and she gets knocked out. Too. It's like oh, it's a whole situation. Oh, dude. dude, imagine you saw your girl <laughs> just one flip flop in the air, like, oh, for fuck's um, sake. Imagine the guy threw the punch so precise on her, yeah, not direct that, that you then were like looking like, right, he kind of knows what you're doing. You know? <laughs> like, you, you, to, you, you analyze the tape afterwards, like, no, nah, that hook here, yeah. no, nah, nah, babe, babe, you have to appreciate it. Babe, that thing is, I, I had to make sure you were okay. <laughs> 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 so that's, I don't know how we, yeah, so I, but I, I've forgiven that guy. Mm. After after months of it, and I I also forgave myself for my behaviour because my girlfriend at the time was not happy with me. And then finally, you forgave your girl for wearing what she was wearing. Yeah, just the instigation. Yeah, of all of these yeah. How dare she? You know, back to square one. Women just admit that sometimes. No, I <laughs> no, I I forgave myself because I went back. Actually, I did, I, we'll wrap this up in a second. For you. I just I just wanted to finish the story if that's okay. Sorry, we always run over on this podcast, but it's because we we like talking. Uh, I I I had to forgive myself because her housemates explained to me what I did wrong, 
was I didn't ask, I should have made sure she was okay before I did anything. And what I was doing was about me. And it was because, the, and this was my point, was it's, and this does sound weird, it's different when I'm not there. But it's now also an insult at me. Like, how one, how dare you do that to... Yeah, because she's your property. No, no, no. Not, be, your... <laughs> not, it, uh, not property, <laughs> but you're also calling me a pussy now as well. And that's that and that was that was the that was the primary thing. No, that wasn't the primary thing, but it's it's got to be brought into it. Like you're you're now going up not only are you sexually one, if my girlfriend came back and told me a story or anyone told me how she was being sexually harassed by someone, I would go to look to solve it, like you were talking about if something happened in a small village or something like that. It immediately comes, I'm gonna go deck this dude, not necessarily out of hatred, mm. out of that's going to probably stop him doing this again because men respond to violence they don't respond to me tweeting little yeah it's like in westerns you know when somebody's spoken bad in your name you have the showdown with the pistols yeah maybe, but maybe i buy into an idea of masculinity that's kind of fading mm. but i also think i also think if you're a it's your job as a guy to protect your uh, I had it, uh, but I, just to make show that i had learned and not, again not miss, i was on a train from victoria the other day and it was a drunk kind of crackhead guy who wasn't leaving the girl alone he wasn't doing anything menacing but he was being a bit over familiar and i remember that and went down and was like hey would you like to come and sit up nearby me rather than immediately confronting him and making it v almost more scary for her because now you got then you got two guys now fighting. Now you got two guys trying to sit with her. Yeah. <laughs> Another creep. For fuck's sake. I think she came and sat. She wouldn't even give me her number. So I brought her. No, <laughs> she wouldn't even put out. For yeah. fuck's sake. Wow. I think, uh, I think we discussed that quite thoroughly. We discussed Again, hate. no solutions. We don't do that on, on B Tech for lots of There are no solutions. There aren't, there are no, there's no solution to hate. You know. Hate only brings more hate, though. It does. Boom. I think I wanted to introduce a new segment before we go called Philosopher of the week Ooh. where I bring out a quote from somebody that I think is pretty profound. Yeah. And then, you know, that that's like the quote of the week. Mm -hmm. And my quote of the week is the old lady who said, why can't we all just get along? And also it's your fault for wearing that you whore. I think <laughs> that is something we can all sit with Dude, and explore. You should have heard Little and Bricks in yet where you've like the white women in there. <gasps> Like you should have heard the gasp. It was, it was, a st it was like it went just from this. I felt such a fug. Yeah. And then the minute she went, well, you shouldn't be dressed like a whore. And the, <gasps> oh, I, everyone just, everyone, even the, even the security guard who sexually harassed my girlfriend like, was like, that's wow, not on. wow, that's okay. not on. <laughs> I'll objectify her, yeah, visually, but come on, you know. But that's that's the podcast for this week. Uh, follow us on we got Twitter now as well. Yeah, we have a B Tech Philosophers There's Twitter uh, Twitter page. Follow Ooh. that, and we have an Instagram. We have the Instagram. We have our individual pages. There's so many means to follow us. There's yeah. really no excuse. And producer Phoebe on Instagram as well. I don't know if you want people following. I am, I've got a private account, and people try to follow me, and I go, "No, thank you." But I might be making it public soon because I've got a few bits and bobs I'm doing. So, so. watch out. Well, for what, that. what are you doing, Phoebe? I'm. Oh, I'm doing another. Can I talk about another podcast? You, you, you know, I mean, no, you, you must. I'll, I'll, I'll no, say it really no, quickly. No, of course, of I'm course. doing a live. I'm doing a live podcast record with the All I Do Is Fail boys, and then oh, after good that, lives. yeah, on the 31st of March, and then uh, the first week of April, I'm going on tour with a band, and I'm doing poetry. Oh shit! No way. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be quite fun. Um, but I will decide if I make my profile public and then <laughs> boost myself that way. <laughs> When that drops, we'll, we'll announce it. We'll announce it. Watch out for that. Us. We're gonna do it. Yeah, we got. Uh, but thank you, thank you for training. In. What's next week's subject? Have we decided? We'll decide on the week. Yeah, that's what this podcast does. We 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 like you guys to see the admin. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you. Oh, for uh, uh, you got anything to promote, Mike? Do I have anything to promote? Yeah, like I, I got that Brighton Fringe show. Come down to that. I don't know when, when it is, is still. Oh I don't. I've not researched when it is. If anybody could tell me, that would be really helpful. Uh, but when it, it, it's in Brighton and it's not been booked by two separate promoters, it's one show. So, yeah, come down to that when, whenever that is. I got, again, May 1st, Match Fest, McCannolith Festival. I'm also going to be in Brixton 
at the Lidl fucking up that security guard. No, I will be <laughs> in Brixton. When am I in Brixton? I'm in. I'm doing a mic. I'm in Brixton at some point at the. Uh, I believe it is in April. I was yeah, twenty sixth, twenty sixth of April. I'll be doing a preview in Brixton at the Prince of Wales, which will be a lot of fun. It'll be cool to have to see if anyone from the podcast comes. I don't know if you if but this will have gone by then. Mike's journal will have been released. Yeah. It'll sour the atmosphere. A- April fifth. I'm also. Uh, You've a- done your shut the no. <laughs> no one each. This is that's going in the journal. Um, <laughs> April fifth. I'll be emceeing my gig at the Street Easy. In Exmouth Street, um, Elliot was on last time. It was really fun. Come down this time, and uh, I'll, I'll give you more details again uh, next week's pod. But uh, yeah, that'd be really cool. And sorry, sorry for running over an hour again, dear listener. But you know, it is what it is. But uh, thank you. This we, this has been B Tech Philosophers. Thank you for philosophizing. Sleep well. <laughs>